Hey everyone, welcome back again to Coffee Time with Mr. Ying, with your host Mr. Ying, and today we're gonna do another book review. So today's book is Applied Machine Learning for Healthcare and Life Sciences using AWS. And oh, by the way, since it's coffee time, make sure to grab your coffee, grab your rum, take a sip. Tastes good. So first things first, let's talk about the author. At my job, we work with engineers from AWS. So it's not a strange thing to see that the author of this book also come from similar environment. And the author's name is Yujua Roteng. Sorry, buddy, if I'm butchering your name. This guy's profile is awesome, right? He's a leader of AI, ML, and data science team for AWS. And on top of that, he specializes healthcare and life science industry. He has helped multiple Fortune 500 companies to design innovative solutions using AWS Cloud Platform and its products for many years, especially in the field of medical imaging, unstructured text learning, genomics, and so on and so forth. So right off the bat, I would like to say that even though there are a lot of AWS books out there, I would say you're in great hands of reading this book. And let me take a step further by saying that I'm reading this book right now. After I've done this job for a year, it's truly amazed to see some of the contents and material definitely resonate with what I'm doing at my job. Which then leads me to say what I need to say, which is had I had this book earlier, I probably get past that beginning curve of my job much easier. Especially when I just joined there are a couple of the building blocks in AWS that I definitely struggle myself. So this book definitely serves that purpose. So with that being said, let's jump right in. So why do you want to do machine learning, right? That's like the crucial question here. Why machine learning? You want to do machine learning in healthcare and life sciences because of the capacity, the scale, and the huge volume of data sets that you see on a day-to-day -day basis. You get a medical image coming here that has billions of pixels. Are you gonna open it with an Excel spreadsheet? Probably not. And how do you plan on process the image and highlight a certain region? Are right, you gonna do that by hand? Right? What if you have thousands of pictures? So all of these require digital solutions, innovative solutions. And that's where machine learning comes in. Second reason is really about improving patient outcome. Because machine learning algorithms is able to identify patterns that are inside of the data representation of what patients are. And for human eyes to read the Excel spreadsheet, you may or may not identify those patterns right off the bat. So the ML algorithms here is really to simplify the pipeline a little bit based on previously existing assumptions that previous scholar have already done. And if these experiences are out there, can be learned, you want to try them first. And that's really why machine learning comes in. And that serves as the second reason of why do machine learning in healthcare. The third reason I want to say is about adoption of machine learning when you're trying to discover a new drug, say a new protein structure. It took humans decades of experiment and sitting in the lab to figure out what the protein structure looked like, and not just one structure. But if you have the power of AI, you're able to use generative models to create these protein structures based on the understanding of what we know. So in other words, it's not really to say that AI beats human performance. It's really about AI relying on what humans know and take it steps further so that we can speed up the drug discovery process. So these three reasons wrap up essentially the main selling point of this book, which really does a great job at explaining how and specifically why machine learning can be applied and used in healthcare and life science industries. And then on top of that, in terms of a particular type of models, the one type of model that's mentioned in this book that I truly enjoy, it's unsupervised learning. Now from school, you learn that, okay, k-means are unsupervised, right? Because you look at the clustering by looking at the distance between the data points, and then you're able to group observations in certain clusters according to these distances without the labels being provided. That's great, right? Because what that means is you are able to come up with a model to learn simply by data itself. You don't need humans coming here to provide any labels. But that's a textbook model, right? That's very basic. 
So what this book is also doing for you, which is something I really enjoy, is it really covers in depth what unsupervised learning can do for you, and specifically how that can be done using neural networks. And even on top of that, how those things can be deployed using AWS. So what is unsupervised learning? Unsupervised learning is the type of learning methodologies under the assumption that there's no labels provided. So you give me a picture, is a cat, is a dog, I would not know that. The model is not provided that information. However, you need to train the model to somehow separate those two classes, cats versus dogs, by itself. So that's interesting, right? That leads to the concept of artificial general intelligence, which is like the next step of what's out there in the frontier of mankind. And what I found interesting about this book is this book kind of builds up that pipeline, builds up that steps leading towards that next milestone, which is super fascinating. And then on top of all of that, one last thing I want to say to you guys is this book has heavy engineering flavor. So we're talking about Docker file, pushing images, using containers, and using Lambda functions, and all that fun stuff. So that's very difficult to cover, right? What are all these things? Docker file is just a script. It's a script that contains instructions to build images. And these images can be anything. It could be configurations, packages, base packages, dependencies, whatever you want. And then on top of that, this book later on in the chapters released a couple of sample Docker file that you can build use Docker and then push that Docker image to a repository live inside of ECR, which is short for Elastic Container Registry. And then you can use that ECR as an image to define the content of your Lambda function. Now, that makes your life much easier, right? Because everything can be done locally. You can design the functions whatever you want locally. And you don't have to do it in the code structure in a Lambda function, which can be very painful because if you come across a package that you need in the Lambda function, which you do not have, then you have to deal with Lambda layers, which is not really a fun stuff. So I thought for the rest of this video, we go through a step-by-step -step process to show you what that pipeline looks like using a very simple Hello World function. With that being said, let's take a look at a screen. So it's a very basic Hello World program. And what we're going to do is we're going to first use Docker to deploy this. This assumes that you have a Docker window open and it's up running. We're going to use Docker to deploy this. And we're going to see this image deployed in a repository that is in Amazon ECR, where ECR is short for Elastic Container Registry. Uh, so we're going to log in first. And then we're going to use Docker build to build this image. And now take a sec. And then we're going to tag this with a name that we can remember. Uh, for example, we're going to call it 210. That's today's day, February 10th. And then we're going to Docker push. Now, of course, when we Docker push, we want to make sure it's 2 underscore 10 because that's the name that we tagged. And it will say they already exist, pushed, and this means it's done. So once it's done, I can come back up here, I can refresh, and then boom, there's a new image that's 210, and then it carries an image URI. I copy this URI, I go to my Lambda, I go to my image, and I say deploy a new image, I can replace this. And I can say save, and I wait a sec. Okay, so now the image is loaded and deployed. We can see that uh, this is updated here. Now we just run a test. So if you click on test, this doesn't really matter because if you look at the function, it's a hello world function. It gives us print statement and nothing happens. It won't really read in event or context. So it's a blank function. Uh, press the test button and boom, it says hello world. So there you go. This allows you to go from command line uh, to integrate this function here as a hello world function, to use a Docker file to build a Docker image, and then get it deployed in a Lambda function. You can test it, and then it works. And then from there, you can add a trigger, a destination, or whatever you want to do. So hopefully you enjoyed that video. It's a recording from an earlier time, so the sound might sound a little bit different. But I hope you get the logistic. And these are kind of the modules that we're talking about when we want to scale up and build up that software environment for your machine learning models. So there you go. If you liked the video, give a like and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys 
in the next episode.